Hi guys and girls, I'm Reef Ben, and today I want to talk about substrates in reef tanks. There are three main options you have when you're setting up a reef tank. You can use nothing at all, just use glass on the bottom. You can put sand on, that's probably by far the most common is people use sand. Or you can do something where you almost have a, a, a empty tank bottom, but you put a cutting board in. Uh, you can buy custom sized cutting boards online uh, and that's a great way to protect your glass. There are pros and cons to each of these though. For sand, number one, it is heavy, uh, it's expensive, you have to buy this stuff. Um, and it doesn't really provide any benefit to your tank other than visual. Most people don't have enough of a depth of the sand to really get the anaerobic environment that bacteria needs to make a deep sand bed really actually work. So you have a, a sand bed, it looks great, but you're gonna have to clean it. And to clean it, you use these uh, overpriced sand vacuums, which are just acrylic tubes. You, uh, uh, you know, drain water out and, and get your sand clean that way. You have to do that every time you do your water change, let's say. The more you feed your fish, the more junk is gonna collect in your sand bed, and then that's just gonna rot or decompose and feed nutrients, nitrates, whatever, back into your water. So if you have a sand bed, it's important to use a sand or gravel vac. And if you don't have a sand bed, you don't have to worry about that, but you do have to worry about things falling. So if you have live rock, which most people do in a reef tank, and it were to fall and hit your glass bottom of your tank, there's a good chance that it's gonna crack it or um, at least scratch it, and then that's a weak spot on the tempered glass that makes up the bottom of your tank. So while a bare bottom tank is nice to look at, it's easy to clean, you just vacuum, we do a water change, suck out whatever is gathered down there, and um, easy to maintain, it is very delicate and you have to be very careful that your aquascape is in a, a very stable manner so that it won't fall over and damage your tank. The happy medium between the two is to use something like cutting board material. Um, obviously this is just a cutting board. I don't know that you'd want to use a black cutting board, um, but they do come in different colors, so feel free to, to you know, enjoy your selection there. If you search for custom cutting boards online, there's a bunch of websites that you can get custom sized cutting boards from. So you could measure the inside of your tank, maybe measure the opening of your tank, and then order a cutting board in whatever color you want to cover the bottom of your tank with. It's gonna protect the glass, but still be easy to maintain because you won't have the sand that you have to deal with vacuuming quite as much. You can just suck off anything that's loose uh, on, a, on a cutting board. One thing to keep in mind though, a lot of cutting boards have antibacterial uh, chemicals embedded in them. Especially if you're ordering one online, you can often just have a checkbox to say, I want this to be an antibacterial uh, cutting board. It's great for things like chicken, things like that. I don't know how well it actually works, but you know, in theory, you're cutting chicken, there could be salmonella, who knows? It's great to maybe have some antibacterial properties in your board. Not so great if you're using that in your fish tank. So if you don't wanna worry about anything like that being in the cutting board material, there's also a material called starboard, which is actually made for boats, for uh, like outdoor shelves on boats, um, places where you might be like cutting up fish after you just caught them, you know, whatever they do on boats. <laughs> and uh, so that's starboard. And you can get that again in any color, any size, any thickness, just like the cutting boards. Um, but you won't have to worry about the antibacterial uh, properties that might be in your cutting board. So those are really the three options you have when you're setting up a new tank. You can go bare bottom and worry about rocks falling. You can go sand and worry about vacuum, having to vacuum it out and clean it up from time to time. Um, or you can go with a cutting board and worry about having to special order a cutting board or, or just cut it down to size with your own saw. Um, I, of course, use sand. I, I like the look of it, but it is a pain to keep clean. And um, it is a pain, particularly in my tank, because it's a, a large tank and it's hard to reach all the nooks and crannies and stuff builds up. and. Um, Every time that I clean the, the sand, all kinds of crud comes out of it, so I know I should be doing it more often. Um, I've thought about trying bare bottom tanks. My tank actually is made by AGE, and they don't use a glass bottom, they use a PVC bottom. So in my tank is actually a gray PVC bottom, 
almost just like a cutting board, but built into the tank, uh, that would be a great thing to use uh, for just a bare bottom tank. You don't have to worry about rocks falling, it's PVC. It can't uh, be broken by a rock falling. So that's something to consider if you're ordering a tank, but um, I don't think anything, um, any companies that you'll find in your normal local fish store make PVC bottoms like that. That's kind of, I've only ever seen AGE do that. Um, yeah, I'd be very interested to know if you have any other ideas for ways that you can set up the bottoms of tanks. I've seen some really awesome tanks where they have uh, cutting boards or just glass bottoms and then they get some uh, like encrusting montiporas or zoanthids or something like that growing across the bottom and you get this nice carpet of coral. Um, obviously that's not gonna work so well on sand. So yeah, I'm very curious. Let me know if you have any other ideas uh, on how to do a bottom of a tank. Be curious, see you next time, bye.